If I'm a US investor in the DAX this year, excuse me, I'm going to put my glasses on, uh, I've done negative 5%. Yeah, year to date, negative. Wait, wait, guy. You're being destroyed by the strength of the dollar. Guy, yeah. guy, well, bring no, up that great okay. chart you had at the top of the hour. It's there. It's good. We're good to bring, go. Bring Diversification hurts. It's all about the U.S. It's yeah. all about the U.S. The, the, the only game in town at the moment is investing in the there United States. And, 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 and guys, and, you're, and, you're absolutely wrong. This is all yeah. about corporate earnings growth. This is not about geography. This is about which companies are growing earnings. There is a very strong correlation this year between earnings surprise, positive earnings upgrade, and stock price delivery. And what we have to find are companies that persistently deliver. In the U.S., we've had two very material advantages. Uh, that yep. have been conferred by the administration, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the fiscal expansion, and then, of course, on top of that, the deregulation that has been an undercurrent ever since the election. That has provided a very propitious environment that has been plainly in sight for all to see. Other markets are going to get there. When? Because, I, I, to be honest, the, the European economic cycle, we're 10 years on in a week's time from Lehman Brothers, and the, the European economy doesn't feel like it ever recovered from it. Certainly the European banking sector never felt like well, it recovered so, from it. So you have to be very selective, and within the European banking sector, I would be looking at companies like Santander because of their global spread and their immensely low rates. Their global spread, i.e. not Europe? No, no, absolutely not a European play, but an opportunity to have exposure to Latin America at a very depressed price. Equally, I would be buying BMW at current prices, eight and a half times earnings for a company that will deliver long-term sustainable share are those value companies, growth. Do those companies have a discount attached to them because they are European? Oh, very much And so. will that be maintained? No, I don't think that discount will remain. I mean, let, let, let's face off in terms of what's happened to the European banking sector in terms of Deutsche and ING. There we have banks that are having to pay their central banks for the privilege of lodging money at the central bank because of the target to inter-central bank lending system. So Germany lends very roughly a trillion euros into Target 2, taken yep. out again by Italy and Spain, and the commercial banks then have to lodge money with the Bundesbank, Germany's central bank, and have to pay the Bundesbank because of negative interest rates about half a percent. That is wrecking value, and everybody is saying, oh, the banking sector has no upside. Actually, if you're selective, I think it has considerable upside. I, I, does, do we get to the point where the, where the economic cycle in Europe is strong enough that the ECB is actually going to be able to raise rates? Because we were talking about this earlier on in the programme. The gap between a US two-year and a German two-year it might have closed a bit, but it's still absolutely massive at this point well, in time. I, I would distinguish between two challenges. First of all, is the aggregate growth in Europe sufficient that we could see self-sustaining growth being maintained? And secondly, is the dispersion of growth within the economy what are the answers of to Europe? Well, first off, I do think the aggregate growth will be OK. But the second challenge, which is, is the growth dispersion still huge? Yes, it is. And it is not dealt with adequately by a single monetary policy. So we have unit labour costs in Germany still coming down. We have unit labour costs and peripheral economies still going up. So we have com continuing competitive advantages being accruing to oh. Germany. Well, Tom, you will know as a student of history that there are only three ways you deal with this. You have differential monetary policy, you allow currency fluctuations, or you have differential fiscal policy. Right. Fiscal policy problem is removed by the Maastricht Treaty. The Bundesbank is part of the ECB, and so we have a single monetary policy. The currency is fixed, and therefore the only way we can deal with this, from my point of view, is to end up with a single Federalist Europe agenda.